Hello, everyone. Hopefully um, you can hear me. So welcome. Um, my name is Melinda Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And I am doing a 12 weeks of Halloween series. This is week three in the series. And hopefully you can see um, the card projects that we're going to be making here on my table. So um, welcome in. Uh, if you are joining me live, I'm doing this live. Uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know if you can hear me because I can't test my audio and I'm trying something new today. Um, hello. Can you hear me okay? Um, so if you get a chance, just let me know. For those of you um, who are jumping on um, with, live with me. If you're watching the replay, I will either edit this out or you can fast forward this part. Um, but yes, you can hear great. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for letting me know. So here's what I'm doing. Um, and you guys might not, this might not matter to you. It's a technical thing. But tonight I am testing out multi-streaming. And that means that I'm actually streaming live in two places at one time. So um, I'm stream, I'm streaming live in my Facebook group, my heart of Halloween Facebook group. And I'm also streaming live on my main Facebook page. Um, hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm seeing Facebook user. I can't see the name, um, of the person who told me that you can hear me, but just know I can see your comments. I just can't see your name. Um, I'm using, uh, something called StreamYard. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Um, I'm using something called StreamYard and I just upgraded today. Now, the ultimate goal with this is to be able to go live on YouTube as well. I've been having requests for that, but I'm super nervous to do it. So I figured I would do a test multi-stream here first. Um, hi, Sandy. Okay, awesome. So yeah, welcome everybody. Okay, so like I said, hopefully everything will go smoothly with the multi-streaming. Um, if not, you can let me know. So that's just a little technical everything. So, but let me um, show you the projects and then we'll talk for a few minutes and then we'll make these cards together, okay? So, so, so happy I could be live with all of you tonight. Thank you, thank you for being here. Um, I, I'm it's been so chaotic schedule wise, which I've been repeating every time I go live, but um, I do feel like we're kind of starting getting into a rhythm. So hopefully uh, this will become a weekly thing again soon. All right. So here are the projects that we are going to be making and I'll go um, down to the table and do like a full size image in just a minute. So here is one of the two cards that we're going to be making. Uh, and then here is the other one. Okay. And uh, for those of you, isn't this cute? <laughs> I love him. Um, so yeah, these are, uh, we're, we're going to have fun making some cards tonight. Um, for those of you who are in the Heart of Halloween Facebook group, um, you have been sharing so much feedback. Thank you so much. Um, and so many of you said that you make cards and I was so excited to hear that. So I decided to, to focus on cards tonight. Um, but I think that with the, these themes, you could very easily turn this into like a, a little gift bag topper or a little, you know, gift box, you know, decoration topper. Um, you could do that too. So um, we're going to get into that as well. Um, hi, Connie. Thank you for sharing. And I had posted some pictures from um, a little restaurant shop uh, called Cracker Barrel. I think they're everywhere. I, I don't know for sure, but it is one of my favorite places for holiday things, but in particular candy. So I'll show you guys what I got. Tracy asked me in the group, what did, what did I get from Cracker Barrel? So I'll show you what I got. Um, I absolutely love it there. They can be a little bit pricey, um, but the things that they have are so unique and you kind of can't find them everywhere else. So um, tonight's projects would be like, you know, something that you're giving to somebody who's close to you. And then there are the things that we sort of produce in large quantities that we can give out to our trick-or-treaters and things like that. So I don't think I'd be shopping for trick-or-treaters um, at a little novelty store like that. But um, 
we could do some really cute stuff. Like this would be more for family, friends, teachers, the, the you know, people that you're saying thank you to. Um, so yeah, I'll show you guys what I got with that. Uh, oh, you did? So Connie's saying that she made a treat box with a treat box with the nested essentials dies. So she's she's already seeing and eyeballing that I used the, the nested essentials dies on this skeleton card. Oh. So for anyone who saw those dies, it initially thought that looks a little bit like the shape of a coffin. <laughs> well, that's the theme we're going for tonight with the nested essentials dies. Um, oh, Florida. So for those of you in Florida, I'm just sending, just take care of yourselves, stay safe. Um, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm hearing from people that are liking Cracker Barrel as well. Yeah, I, I've been getting um, updates on the news about what's, I actually have family down in Florida, um, but just for all of you, just be safe, take care. Um, I know it, it's, it's, it's wet and miserable with the weather. Um, somebody is saying my grandkids are all teenagers, so they get treats and cash. Yeah. So cards are perfect for cash, but you could do gift card holders, right? Um, there's an online only gift card holder set that I'm, I'm going to be going, we're going to be working with during the 12 weeks of Halloween. Um, but for tonight, we're going to focus on the cards. Um, so oh my gosh, I'm loving all the comments. Thank you so much. Uh, it does look like he's sitting in a car. That's the whole idea, Tracy. It looks like he's in a coffin, right? It's, and I mean, fashionable, right? He's fashionable. So um, with the them bones suite or the bag of bones bundle, just depending on which one you get when it becomes available. So um, let I'll, I'll cover a few bases, but uh, anytime you hear me referring to the them bones suite or to the bag of bones bundle, those are items in our brand new mini catalog that will be launching to customers on September 6th. But those products were so popular during pre-order that they're actually not available until the week of the 11th. Um, so September 11th. So it's just a couple of days later than that. But that's where the skeleton is from. And one of the elements that I wanted to do during the 12 weeks of Halloween is give you guys ideas with our everyday products that you could turn into Halloween cards, treat bags, ideas, and things like that. So um, this guy, he has a top hat and he's got some fancy shoes and he has a cane and, you know, he's got a little bow tie. So he's dapper, right? He's dapper and he's fancy. And so I just wanted his, um, his little coffin here to be sort of fashionable and dapper too. So that was what I was going for there. That's why we have this little pattern here too. Um, but yeah, so we're going to make our little ghosts with the songbird punch, um, tonight. So I can show that to you. Um, I had posted in my group a picture, like with a tip saying, oh, you could turn this into a ghost. And somebody said, I, I'm so sorry. Um, I can't think of your name. I can't see the comments from the group, but she was like, can you show me an example with that? And I was like, I'm so sorry. I am running late with my projects, but I'm going to get caught up. I swear. Okay, so let's go down here. Yeah, I love I love Cracker Barrel too. And oh, Corinne says she has a short video on YouTube. That's awesome, Corinne. Um, let's see. Wendy's always had the booklet smoothie ice cream too. Um, oh, Wendy's, yes, the little the booklet for Halloween, the with the coupons in it. That's such a great idea for Halloween. Um, I forgot about that. The little frosties. Oh, I loved that when I was younger. Okay, so there's a few things that I need to go over with all of you um, just quickly because we're, we're at the end of the month here. So there were a few things that were happening in August that are wrapping up. So as I'm recording this live, it is um, August 30th, and today is actually a Wednesday, which I don't know why I've been going live on Wednesdays, but that's what's been happening. So um, today is the last day for my August host code. So if you know, if there's anything that anybody needs, or if you want to use this particular host code, um, just make sure you do it before midnight. Um, I'll be closing out the code tomorrow. So um, I will start a new code on September 1st. So it'll just be one day that we don't have the code. So um, if you spend $50 or more before tax, 
in the online store using that host code, um, I will send you a free embellishment in September from the August host code. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can let me know. Um, but that's just a little gift and a little thank you from me for shopping with me in the online store in August. Okay, now there was a sale on kit collection in August, and that is going to be ending tomorrow. So I just wanted to shout that out. Um, for anybody who had earned bonus days coupons in, uh, um, in July, you redeem them in August, you redeem them this month. So tomorrow is going to be the last day to redeem the bonus days coupons if you earned them, if you shopped in July and earned those coupons. Um, so there is that. And then I think, I don't know if I put my name up or not, but that's me. And then um, if you need to find any information out on my blog, um, here is my blog information. So the way that it works with um, the way that my cards and my lives and everything is right now, I update the day after the live. So I will update the blog. I'll get the free project sheet out and I will do the email with the video replay tomorrow. So all of that will go out tomorrow. Um, if you're in my Heart of Halloween Facebook group, I'll post the PDF right into the group. Um, if you're on my email list, it'll get emailed to you. So a lot of people can just grab it that way. And for anybody who isn't already on my email list, when you click the link, you can get signed up to get the free project sheet. Okay. Um, so there is that. Uh, and again, if you guys have any questions throughout the, you know, along the way, just let me know. So I think that covers the majority of what we have going on there. Um, but what did I want to say? Uh, so paper pumpkin, don't really feel like I need to talk about it tonight, but if you are interested in subscribing, um, to paper pumpkin, you have until September 10th. So you still have some time, but the whole reason, um, that I started this series for the 12 weeks of Halloween is, was, was to take a look at some past paper pumpkin kits that had a Halloween theme because this year they decided to go with a gratitude theme. So, um, while I don't know exactly, you know, what will be in the kit until I get it. And while I don't know what October is going to be, um, I'm pretty sure that they're not doing a Halloween kit like they have been in the past. So we're just coming up with some fun ideas and ways to, um, kind of keep that going by looking at, inspiration from the past kits, but I'll be using current products. So that's been the whole theme here. If you aren't already um, in the Facebook group and you like Halloween projects, you can, I'll put links um, below in the replay. Um, and I send all the information out in my email as well, if you want to join the group. Um, and you can follow along for the 12 weeks of Halloween. And then at the end of the 12 weeks, I'll probably just you know, stop the group because Halloween will be over. Um, but I've never really done, a, I've done a group before, but never on this scale. So it's sort of new to me. So just bear with me. Um, I am seeing and reading all of the comments. Um, and I, I love everything. I love everything that I'm seeing and reading. And I love all of your interaction and your projects. I think it's so cool. So it's been a lot of fun in there. Um, I am posting my videos for the 12 weeks of Halloween everywhere on my YouTube channel, Facebook, all of that. So you can always find that information there as well. Okay, let's jump in and make some cards. Um, and if you have any questions, just, you know, pop them, pop them into the, the chat uh, if you want to. So let's get a closer look at what we're going to be making here tonight with our two cards. So these are both A2 size cards. Um, hi, Sue. She's saying hello from Ohio. Um, welcome. Hi, Rose. And I think I called out everybody else, but if I missed your name, just I'll shout you out. I'll go back through comments as we're um, kind of making our cards. So we're going to start with the easy card. We're going to start with this one here. And because I am working on my table next to my computer, um, I'm, I cut everything in advance, or at least I tried to, but we're going to do the punching together. Um, so this is what I consider the easier card. And this one is a little more work, but I did do the die cutting in advance, but I'll show you what I did. I do have some ideas and some tips for you. And for those of you who are following along with past kits, uh, the inspiration for this card in particular, these little ghosties right here, um, came from the Frights and Delights September 2018 Paper Pumpkin Kit. 
Uh, this was, I believe, the first kit that I got. This was the one that I found, but I'm pretty sure this was when I subscribed. And for those of you who aren't interested in the past kits or paper pumpkin or all of that, I totally understand. And you could just fast forward a few minutes if you're watching the replay right now. We're live, so you have to kind of hang with me. But this was the, um, the project sheet or the instruction sheet that came with that year's kit. And I'm so sorry that I don't have um, an actual live product or project to show you, but I think I used all of these pieces. And I am going to try to recreate these tags a little more closely. That'll be for another day. But you see these little ghosts right here? So I wanted to put some ghosts on a card. And so that's where the inspiration comes from. I do want to make these tags as well, but I, I decided to just kind of stick to the cards tonight. And I wanted to do cards with like sort of everyday product and then a little bit of a mix with our new upcoming product here. So this was called Frights and Delights. And then on the back here, um, they had, you know, all of the... Uh, things that came in the kit and the little stamp set and all of that. I don't even have the stamp set, but some of you have been posting pictures in the group, which I really appreciate. And here you can see back in 2018, they didn't actually show alternate projects yet. Isn't that interesting? So I didn't realize that, like I totally forgot, but yeah, I love these project sheets. I miss some of these. They were really cute, cute little gift bags here. Um, but whether you're doing a pumpkin and there's something, um, there's going to be, oh gosh, I think it's called pick of the patch. I can't remember exactly, but there's like really cute pumpkins that you can punch out that's coming up in the new catalog. So you could use that for that. For our big bat, I'm not sure. Uh, I have to think about this one, but with our little ghost, we're going to do something a little bit easier. Now the arms on this ghost are out and you can definitely recreate that. Well, we can play. But my arms are actually in, meaning um, I just did it so like the ghost looks a little bit surprised, like the little surprised face. Um, so anyway, that was the inspiration for this card. And then last week we were talking about the Bon Appetit set, and that is going to be a recurring theme because of the new product that we have to use. So um, that was my inspiration there. And let me see if I, I don't think I have any pieces at all left. Oh, here, I do have this. So these were some of the words that came in there. I can't believe I have these. I'm so excited I have something in here. I thought this was empty. So these were some of those words, and they were adhesive backed. I, I just, I can't even believe that I still have these. But that one was foil. And this one was, I believe, in Gorgeous Grape. So we had Spooky, Boo, and Eek. And we still have those words and phrases on the new Designer Series paper, but on a much smaller scale. Um, and I do have another bundle on the way that I think has Boo in it, but I can't remember. I would have to take a look, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so here's what you're going to need uh, for card one. So I'm going to set this one aside. And we'll come back to this one in a little bit. All right. But for card number one, um, we're just doing a uh, basic white card base or our A2 size. And Starry Sky is the color that you didn't know that you needed for Halloween this year. I'm just going to shout it out right now for anybody who gets this Them Bones Designer Series paper. It is a must. Now, I did get out the Glow in the Dark 6x6 specialty paper. I did not use it on these cards. I stuck with basic white. But if you want your little ghosts to glow in the dark, you can consider doing that on your glow in the dark paper. Um, I think that that would be so much fun. Can you imagine doing a bunch of these little ghosts with like little toppers and putting them out for your trick or treaters at night on a table? Like how cute would that be glow in the dark? So just something to keep in mind there. I haven't used that paper yet, but we're going to. I promise we will. Um, get a couple of pieces of scrap paper. You're going to need um, just like a smaller piece here that we're going to use for our sentiment later. Uh, this is just a little half inch strip and we'll trim it down to three and three quarter inches. Uh, the size on this, I don't exactly know what it is. I can find out for you. But basically what we want to do is just have it be wide enough that we can punch out our pieces here. So let me see if I can tell you how wide and thick this strip is here. It's not thick, but it's wide. So let's see. 
Um, this piece is just under three inches, two and seven eighths of an inch here. And that will be absolutely fine. So I am going to put these pieces aside. So we have our basic white base. This is going to be our starry sky cardstock layer. All right. This is our sentiment. I put two in here just in case I mess up when I stamp because you guys all know how that goes. Um, and then I'm just going to put this over here. We're going to be using some of the designer series paper here in just a minute, but we can start by making our little ghosts. So I'm just going to pop this in here. Now you can punch it like down on the table if you want. I always punch it upside down um, just so that I can see what I'm punching. Okay. Just be careful. You don't pinch yourself just go like that. Okay. And then we are going to use these little pieces here. So this is what it looks like when it, you know, when it punches out because this is supposed to be a bird, but we're going to get creative here. So we're going to keep this little wing and we're going to keep this little beak and we're going to put these little two pieces over here. And then we're going to do this one more time. Okay. I have like a little bit of a little mark on there. Oh, this should be good. Okay, so here's our second one. I'm just going to put these little pieces that I don't need over here. And then we're going to need two of these for our little wow, our little wow ghost here. All right, and so I'm just going to set this aside. All right, and then let me just get my scrap paper here. All right, so the first part, which is pretty easy is just get your paper snips, just get your little scissors. Okay. And all we're going to do is trim off this little bit here. So we're just going to keep rounding it. Basically, we're just going to follow the line. Okay. And then for this little bit down here for the tail, we're going to go right to that corner. And let me just make sure that you guys can see the light here. Okay, so we're going to go right to that corner. And instead of going down, we're going to go slightly sideways. So we're just going to extend that tail just a little bit, just so that it looks a little bit ghosty. Okay. And so with our little tail, we can just say goodbye to that. Don't need that. All right. And so for the first one, we're just literally going to draw our little face. Now you could use whatever you want for this. Um, you can use your stamp and write marker. You can use your stamp and blend basic black marker, um, whatever, whatever you have on hand. And then we're just going to draw a couple of eyes and then a little surprised mouth. And then we're going to put these two little arms right here. Now, if you would want to do it more of the paper, or like the paper pumpkin ghost way, have little arms kind of going outward, you could kind of do it like that. But I just think that the little surprised ghost is too cute. You could also have the ghost like holding something. So like a small pumpkin or a little piece of candy corn, you know, because you could turn this into a piece of candy corn as well, you know. So you could do something like that. You could do that if it was going to be like a little candy corn that you were gifting. Um, some people said they really like candy corn in the Facebook group when I was asking what Halloween candy you liked. And I love candy corn too. So I thought that was great. All right. So I'm just going to get my glue. Now I'm kind of kind of put the glue just in the, uh, the middle of the wing. And then I just want this to kind of come up so that it's like kind of touching on the mouth just a little bit same thing with the other side Let's see <laughs> i just think that that's so funny okay all right and then there is our little ghost i just want to kind of bring that arm down to the edge there Okay, so that's our little worried ghost or our little scared, surprised ghost. And then this is our happy ghost. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to take this little top feather thing off. We're going to do that same little, just smooth little curl there. We're going to take 
this little beak and we're going to turn it into a mouth. We're just going to color it. Okay, so I'm just going to use my um, Stampin' Write marker. On this one, I did the Stampin' Blends in Basic Black versus the Stampin' Write marker. So you can see the difference in the black. Um, very subtle, you know, but it's okay either way. Uh, I haven't gotten the new Stampin' Write markers yet. This is still my old one, but I think it's about the same. If it's different, somebody let me know. I know that they said they had a little bit of a reformulation, but I think that the color is still very saturated. Okay, and so same thing with the eyes. So we're going to do two eyes. Okay, I want eyes a little bit bigger. It's okay. All right, there's our eyes. And then we'll do our little mouth. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back here. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Now, there are certainly other ways that you can make ghosts, um, and you guys can get creative with this. This would be my very, very basic version of punch art. But here are our two little ghosties here um, using that songbird punch. So really quick and easy, doesn't take a lot of work. This is something that you could give to one of your kids to do. Um, you know, and I think they could just go crazy with that, right? Like look, drawing all the eyes on, they could have fun with the faces that they make. I think that'd be really cute. Okay. Now for the next part of this, we're going to be using the Them Bones Designer Series Paper Pack. And this piece here, I just wish I had 20 of these. I'm not even kidding. I absolutely love this paper. So I'm going to get my paper trimmer here. And we're going to cut this into sections. I wanted to do this live with you. I'd already cut up the first one. Um, but you will see we're going to use Boo. And we're going to use the back of this pattern here, which has our Boo and our Eek on it, which kind of ties into that paper pumpkin kit. And then we're also going to be using the trick or treat panel for this card, as well as this like sort of herringbone pattern, but it's actually in the shape of a bat. So uh, this piece, this piece, this piece, and then the back of this piece. I could always save this, but it's, it's okay. We can, we can use it. So I'm just going to cut this up, and we're going to get the panels that we're going to use tonight. Okay. And, I mean, try to get it as close as you can, but if you don't get it perfect, just just go with you know the, the best the best you can in cutting out your panels okay and i'll get you measurements on these in just a minute sorry i'm so sorry if i'm shaking the camera and i want to do this in a way that you guys can see what i'm doing so let me just move this there we go. That should be a little bit better. And we're going to cut this. And I'll go back to looking at comments here in just a minute. So can you see how there's just like a little bit of pattern left kind of top and bottom? We're just going to trim it up a little bit. So I'm just going to take a little bit off. Still keeping the bats and everything, right? But And those bats are in Starry Sky, by the way. All right, and then we're just going to trim a little bit off of our edge. So it's not the actual perfect printed size, um, but it's close enough. So this measures four inches by, I'm trying to get it to the line here, just over two and a half, it looks like. Okay, so the original piece that I cut for this card, let's see, here it is. Okay, the original piece that I cut was four and a quarter by three. So three by four and a quarter. And when we put it on here, it's fine, but I think there's a little too much space here. I'm going to kind of bring that down a little bit. So what I'm going to do, let's try two and seven eighths. Well, actually, 
Let me just see what this looks like. I'm just going to lay it down. I think two and three quarters is going to be fine. Yeah. All right. We're going to do two and three quarters. And that gives us a really nice tight border. So you can do this, you know, if yours is just very slightly bigger, just modify slightly. I cut it a little bit larger, but this actually works out really well. So this is going to be our nice clean layer here. Now the other panel that we're going to use for this card is this piece here. We're going to use the reverse side because of all the pieces that are here. This is the one that I would let go of. I have to keep this. We have to use that on something. All right. So we'll come back to these in just a minute. But for this one, we're all set. So now this piece measures, uh, it looks like six, like four and a quarter by six. But what I want to do is cut it down to four and five and a quarter inches. Okay. So we're going to go to four. We're actually going to save this piece. Um, I'm going to trim it down to five and a half inches. I'm going to, I'm going to do just a little over five and a half, just in case I need a little extra space on this, but we're actually going to save this for the inside of the card because it has our, our little line of all of the boo and the eek. Okay. And so now we're going to trim this to five and a quarter. So this actually has really nice, clean layers to it. Now we could always save this for something else. So I'll just put that aside. All right. And so as we start to build our card layout here, here are our pieces. We're going to do our two little ghosts, one up here, one right down here. Okay. And then we're actually going to stamp. Let's get into the spirit. I couldn't resist. We're going to be using this stamp set more than once. Um, I have more ideas coming up with this set, but this is going to be great. Absolutely great for Halloween. Um, my cord, my earphones cord is really short. And I keep tugging the computer. Hopefully you guys aren't seeing that. Okay, so this is the sentiment. This is from Bottled Happiness. Now, if you have the coordinating punch, which I can't believe it, but I don't. I don't know why, but um, I don't have the coordinating punch. There's actually like these little um, plastic pieces. You could turn it into a shaker. If you have the punch, you could do a lot of fun stuff with this um, if you have those pieces. And if you just have the stamp set, we're going to be doing some fun stuff with the stamp set. But for tonight, all we need is the let's get into the spirit sentiment. So that is what this is from. This is in our annual catalog. Okay. And then I'm going to get my Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I'm just going to clean this off. I can't remember if I cleaned it off after I made the sample. So let's do that. I should be doing this on my, it's okay. All right, let's get into the spirit. Should have done it on the phone pad, but it's okay. All right, so that's basically our card. Now here's what the inside of this card looks like. So just stamped our happy Halloween and starry sky and ran this little piece along the bottom. You can see I was a little under with my paper. So this time I wanted to measure it correctly. And then we're also going to use some of these glow in the dark embellishments. And let me show these to you. Okay. 
So these are called Glow in the Dark Bats and Ghosts. So for those of you who actually get the whole Them Bone Suite, it's going to have the Designer Series paper, the bundle, and it's going to have these in it as well, as well as the Glow in the Dark paper. But if you just get the bundle, it's called Bag of Bones, just something to keep in mind. But if you're getting these things individually, now I can't show you guys with all this light, but these do glow in the dark. So I'll try to get a picture of these finished projects um, in the dark and see if you guys can see the difference. I don't know. Well, I'm not the best photographer, but I will try. Okay, so now we can actually start putting this all together. Um, before I do that, though, this is the one that's done. I'm going to do the inside. I'm going to stamp the inside first. Okay, and then we'll just glue these pieces down. All right, and then I'm going to get my Happy Halloween, my Happy Halloween stamp, and my Happy Halloween stamp is from Bag of Bones. So let me show this one to you. Okay, so this is the one that's going to be coming out um, when the catalog launches on the sixth, but it's on back order until September 11th. So here's our Happy Halloween sentiment that we're going to do. I'm just going to get my starry sky, and let me clean this off super quick. Should have done that before the live. Sorry, you guys. Okay. okay. And this one, I am going to get my little scrap paper. Make sure you protect your surface when you're coloring with your markers. You can see mine kind of marked through there. All right. And then I'm just going to ink this up. Can you see that? Okay. So there's my trying not to get, I get this stuff everywhere. All right, so there is our Happy Halloween. This is such a beautiful saturated color. And I, as soon as I started working with it for Halloween and coordinating with it, I mean, I love this. I know we would typically do gorgeous grapes, so it's so nice to have Starry Sky. And on the other side of that, Pebbled Path is like Grey Granite's cousin, and it's awesome for Halloween. So we'll be using that one next. Um, okay, so I'm just going to put this little piece right down along here. Yeah, and it looks like it's just long enough. Okay, great. So this, this cardstock, I must not have cut this right, must be very slightly over five and a half inches. So I'm going to put this almost to the very edge there. Let me just put this down. And we'll just keep this card clean. Um, if there is a little bit of an overlap here, which you guys can see just right here, I'm just going to trim that. Okay, so that looks great. All right, so now let's go ahead and we'll do the outside. We're just going to rebuild it. So all we have to do is actually glue the pieces down now. But I really like how simple this card is. I just talk a lot. <laughs> okay. And piece down. Make sure your words are going in the right direction. They are. We're going for that quarter inch border. It's, it's just a classic for me. I do that with so many of my cards. All right. And then if you want to, you know, use dimensionals and things like that between layers, you can. I'm going to keep these layers flat, but I am going to pop my ghosts up on dimensionals. But this would be a great flat card if you're mailing. I'm going to put this slightly above so that we have room for our sentiment at the bottom. A little bit of room for our ghosts to float as well. I just, I think this paper is a must. That is my personal opinion. I absolutely love this year's paper pack for Halloween. And speaking of paper, um, they recently announced, oh, I'm going to put this up on dimensionals too. So we're going to do, uh, let's see. I look like I am low on my regular. I mean, I have plenty of dimensionals around here, but I don't know if I have any in the basket left. So let's put these on. So I'll put one little ghostly right here. I really kind of wanted them framing in the boo. That was my goal. So I'm going to try to stick with that. Stick with that theme there. 
That's the original, just so that you can see. Okay. So. All right, so there are our two little ghosts, and then is that going to be too wide? I'm just going to use a couple of mini dimensionals for this. It should be fine. Okay. Okay. So I know I lost my train of thought there, but speaking of designer series papers, they just very recently announced that they're, they're actually going to be coming out with online exclusive papers on September 6th. Um, so in addition to all the new catalog papers, uh, there's going to be new papers in addition to that, um, that will be online only. Sorry. I'm going to try to Put this right under and what i'm trying to do here is use this to line it up this way and i'm trying to use this line to line it up this way just to try to keep it clean there okay so i am going to be opening up my paper share i will have two options uh paper share only um everything cut to six by six size and then i will also have a paper share plus class so if you're not already on my email list, that's where the information is going to be released tomorrow. Um, I think tomorrow is safe to post that. So um, I'll double check myself and make sure, but it'll be coming out in the next day or so. Okay, so now we're going to just decorate these up. We're going to put a couple of little bats right here. Just have them flying around with their starry sky bat friends. And then... To our little ghosts. So we'll be pulling up this ghost with the adhesive. Okay. And then I'm just going to put this little ghost and then this little ghost right over here. I want to go to the corner. Yeah. Okay. And so that is card one. Okay. So, um, for that's, I think, a simpler card. And again, I think that that could be a really cute tag too. And we might do a tag um, a little bit later on down the line. I, I would like to do a whole tag video. So um, that'll be coming later. Just try to keep it organized that way, at least in my mind. Okay. And so let me get our second card here and we can start working on that. Let me just check comments really quick. Um, cute. So cute. Thank you guys. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Tracy. Um, all the glow in the dark, dark items are so cool. Thanks, Corinne. Okay, good. So I don't see, kind of mad that we're not getting a Halloween kit. Yeah, I was, it took me a minute. Um, and then I, I just kind of, even though I knew I didn't really have the time, I was like, I'm going to figure out a way to do 12 weeks of Halloween. And then that was the way that in my mind, I kind of made peace with it. Hello from Georgia. Okay, so, all right, let's jump into card number two. Uh, here it is. All right. So this one's a little bit more involved. And like I said, I pre-cut a lot of the pieces here. So I'm hoping to cut down on the, you know, craft time or, you know, all of the cutting time here, but just know you would need a stamp and cut and emboss machine for this. I'm using the, um, they're technically called the bag of bones dies. So if you get the bundle, it will be called bag of bones. I'm just going to repeat this throughout. So bear with me. Um, and then if you get the whole, the whole suite, it would be called them bones. Okay. So, uh, we'll be using this stamp set, of course, or am I using a stamp set for this? I don't think I did unless we do something on the inside because I cut this guy out of paper. So that's what I wanted to show you. Okay. So let me show you the sheet of paper here. Now for my, uh, paper pumpkin people, for those of us who are used to getting like lots of die cuts, right? And we're not getting that this year. This paper will take care of needing a bunch of the same thing. So let me show you what I mean by that. I didn't get to cut them all out, so I didn't get a count on it. Uh, but here, let me just show you. This is the full sheet. Okay, so here's the full sheet. This, um, these headphones are driving me crazy. Okay. So this is what the full sheet looks like. And you can actually die cut pretty much everything on this page. So this is what it looks like when you start die cutting out all of these pieces. Um, you could die cut the dog. You can die cut the cat. 
you can die cut all of the different colored skeletons perfectly with the dies from the bag of bones bundle okay and even our little half pieces like even our little half skeletons here cut those out too because we can have these popping up out of you know the ground or behind a tombstone or we could do some really fun stuff with these little half you know skeletons so cut those out too um, but you're going to get a ton of pieces. So if you do need to do a larger, uh, you know, a, a larger batch of things. So many of you told me you make 20, 30, 40, you know, either it's treat bags or um, cards. This is great paper for that. So I did want to shout that out because I was so happy. And you can cut a lot of it at one time. And this is what I mean by that. You can even cut out the bat. Okay, so um, they're kind of hard to see here, but you can do that. And then I actually cut out like the top hat and the shoes. I cut that out of this paper as well. Um, I really like the way that that kind of aged, you know, faded black looked. And I wanted to use that. So I actually kept this piece intact so that you can see. If you cut this paper out in sections, uh, you can actually get one, two, three, four. So I cut out three bats and then the three shapes, uh, the cat, the dog, and the skeleton there. So this is really great that you can get multiples when you're running this through. And it makes you feel a little bit more productive. But again, if the you know bulk die cutting is not for you, give this to somebody who would actually enjoy doing this. And then you can you know be the one to create all the cards or you know whatever. So... There's always somebody who enjoys the die cutting. In my family, it's my mom. Okay, and my son actually loves the stamp and cut and emboss machine too. Okay, so this is the rope 3D embossing folder, which is what I used on his coffin here. The coffin itself is with the nested essentials dies. Okay, so this is what the nested essentials dies look like, and I used the larger two. Now my choice to use the larger two, I just wanted you to be aware, it does come up over the card. So even though this is an A2 size card, you would need a larger envelope if you're planning on mailing this, or you might want to slightly just angle him or turn him or something. Um, and you could do it that way. We used a little bit of Wink of Stella in certain spots. I used a glow in the dark bat on his top hat here. Um, and then I cut out his cane and his little, uh, his little bow tie in pebbled path and this larger coffin piece is cut in pebbled path but i actually kind of aged it a little I, I actually turned it darker than i had intended to but i do think it looks really cool um so let me just show you the pieces here and we'll need to trim out the pieces that we need for this card as well so let me get these pieces too we can trim this out together right now let me just grab my paper trimmer. We'll cut our papers together and then this is my card base and information it's so hard when there's stuff that you're doing off camera and things that you're trying to do a little more quickly I, I i would sit here and craft with you for three hours if i could but my family would not be down with that so soon i'll be crafting in the daytime and we won't have to worry about it i'm just not there yet because i'm still designing these classes that i'm going to be having for the fall i'm going to be doing an autumn class and a halloween class um, so make sure you're on my email list if you want information about that. I'll be announcing the paper share first. The fall and Halloween classes will come in September. Um, and I'll have more information on that very soon. Okay. I'm just going to cut all four panels out while we're here. All right. So we're going to need this one. And we're going to need this one. And we're going to trim these down a little bit more. Okay. So what we're going to need here for these pieces. This is the larger of the two panels. So we need to cut this basically to four and a quarter. So right now the length of this is just under five inches. Okay, so we're gonna trim this a little bit. Um, I think it was the top that I trimmed. So let's see if we can go to four and a quarter inches. I can't remember. If, yeah, I feel like it's a little bit closer here. So I'm going to go to four and a half, actually. I'm going to trim 
there. And then I'm going to go and flip it to the other side and go to four and a quarter. And trim there. Okay. And that should give us, you know, trying to keep that centered. And I just wanted to show this to those of you who are my um, tag friends. This is from the Something Fancy, that Something Fancy Dies. You could make really cool tombstones with this or tags with this, like little fold over toppers like we just saw with the Frights and Delight kit. But look at how perfectly it fits the trick or treat. So I had to mention that regardless as to which direction that you're doing. I almost cut this, but then I decided to keep it a full panel. Okay, so that's the first piece that we need. Then the second piece that we need also um, trim down to four and a quarter inches here. All right, and then you could either have some slight overlap or you want to cut it to, and I'll get you the measurement on this while we are here, two and three quarters. Okay, so two and three quarters by four and one quarter. Two and three quarters, and I'm just going to go in a little, little over. Just give myself a little wiggle room with that since we don't get, you know, a ton of these. All right, so we have those. And then I have this piece here because I wanted to show you, those of you who do not want to do the coffin, you could just do the skeleton um, or you could put something else in the middle and you could do a decorative strip. So that's why my little basic black piece is here. I wanted to show you the difference between the basic black and the pebbled path with a little bit of black ink on it so it's still lighter in color but this is what the layout would look like if you decided not to do the coffin so i just wanted to show this to those of you who might not want to do that okay so i'm put these two pieces down i'm going to put this one down first that's i'll glue this one down first as well okay we're going to layer this one right over top so it's okay if there's a little bit of an overlap there all right, and then we would put this piece down right here. And then you could just do your skeleton and you can decorate him however you want. So you could dress him in cowboy boots. You could lay him just a skeleton here. You know, you might want to put something else down here. You could put one of the pets like the cat or the dog. Um, you could do something fun that way. So this could be a really cute layout without that, but I love it and we're going to add it, okay? So here, let's get our pieces. Uh, you can see this is what it would look like if we didn't do any of the blending brush, okay? So it would just be a little cleaner. This one's a little bit dirtier, okay? So we are gonna, you know, age it up a little bit because he's been here for a while, but he still has style. All right, and then let's get those little pieces. So here are our little pieces here. We have our top hat our shoes, we have our cane, we have three bats, and we have our bow tie, okay? And you can stamp the skeleton too, but it's so nice to have it already done for you. Um, so that's the piece that we're gonna be working with tonight. So we're gonna decorate him up now. And I am going to be bringing in a few things. So let's age the coffin first, and then we'll do these little pieces. I just want to keep these pieces together so I don't lose them. Okay. Now I'm going to be using my small blending brush for this, and then my Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. If you want to keep it a little bit lighter, you could just do Pebbled Path on Pebbled Path. Pebbled Path is one of our new in colors. I've been using all of our new ink colors quite a lot for my club. And this is the last month of club. Now I'm going to make this messy. So I'm going to be kind of stippling and just kind of, I know that that looks like, oh, she made a mistake, but honestly, it actually looks a little more agey like this than doing the smooth blending. And I'll show you what I mean. And this was how I ended up making it so dark. So I'm going to go light at first and I'll show you. And then I'll darken it up a little bit because I actually really like the way that it looks. OK, 
Okay, so, you know, in, in nature, it would kind of be smudged. All right, and so if I just did that, it just looks a little bit smoky, doesn't it? So if you don't smooth that out, it just kind of looks like, even though it's marked up, once you put that layer on, like you really can't, you can't tell, right? But if you want to smooth it out, you could just come in and smooth it like this, okay? And that kind of gives you just a little bit more of a, like a softness to it. But I think it's fine, just like that. So I'm going to leave it just like that. And then I'm actually going to get a little bit more. And I'm just going to come in. And this one is definitely going to be more on the subtle side, just doing the edges here. I really want to maintain my pumpkin pie, my bright orange color. But just going to kind of come in on those edges because... If he's been around for a while, then this would not be pristine. Might be a little bit dusty. And the great thing about doing that on embossed is that it catches all of that detail, which I just absolutely love. Okay, so that's how we kind of get that look there. So let me close this. And we're gonna pop this right down. Now, I think you could actually do like a door. I, I, I have to play with this a little bit more, but um, I think you could do a door. I think it'd be really fun. And like open it. <laughs> and like maybe the skeleton would pop out, you know? We gotta, we gotta do something fun. All right, but here um, we're gonna go and do our skeleton pieces now. So we'll just put this over here. We'll put that together in a minute. And I'm gonna get my Wink of Stella now. Okay. Now, the other thing that I did was I added just a dab of orange to his eyes just to kind of, you know, coordinate him. So I have my dark pumpkin and pie here. Just going to use my bullet tip side and just right where his little eyeballs are, I'm just going to dot a little bit of color. Okay. And then I didn't actually put any Wink of Stella on my skeleton, but I did put it around the edge of the coffin. Totally optional. It's okay to be messy. Um, I'm going to do just a little bit on his hat. So let me, do I have any scrap paper here? Yes. Do I have any scrap paper here? I've got a, a lifetime of scrap paper. What am I talking about? Okay. So I just want to kind of warm up my Wink of Stella here, get that color going. It's just a little glitter pen here. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just, there's a little um, embossed indentation on his hat. And I'm just adding a little bit of shine to that part of his hat. You could do the whole hat if you want. I'm just doing that little line. And we are going to slightly cover it. And then for his walking stick or his cane, I'm going to just put some Wink of Stella right down the, um, the shaft of the cane here. Okay, just to give that some shine. I'm leaving the tip alone because he's going to be holding that. And then we're going to shine up his shoes. Okay, and then let me get the other shoe. I'm going to do the same thing. So just small amounts. This is designer series paper, so they're like air light. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave the bow tie alone. I think I left the bow tie. Yeah, we're going to leave the bow tie alone, but we are going to add some Wink of Stella to our bats. Okay, I'm trying not to touch them. Okay, and just this last one here. And where I cut this on the paper, this one actually looks a little bit lighter, agey. Okay, I have a little bit, yeah, I have a lot actually. Wink of Stella on that. All right, so we're just going to give those a second to dry. This is what the brush looks like. When I push in on mine, it like oozes. So I don't know if that's just me. I've had other brushes that did not do that. So I think when I initially put that one together, I kind of messed that up a little bit, but it's okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our, you know what, I shouldn't have put it away yet. What I'm going to do is literally just take my brush and I'm going to try to focus on the stitching. That's just, that's my goal with this. So I'm just going to lightly go around the edges here. 
and what my scrap paper did I move it already? Okay, I'm just dabbing my brush off screen. I want to keep the glitter moving. Hopefully this is in focus. You can always go back over it again, but I'm just dabbing my little wink of cello on my little scrap paper there. And I definitely messed up down here, but that's okay. If you're going to mess up, make it a Halloween project because, you know, you can just blame it on the fact that everything's spooky. Okay. But this is cute. I, I still think it's cute, spooky. And then I kind of can't talk when I'm doing this. Isn't that funny? Okay. Just want to come down this line a little bit thicker. All right, I'm going to dab my wake up still one more time. Just make sure I still have that glitter coming out. Okay. So hopefully you can see that shine on the edge there. Okay, so it's pretty subtle. But in person, the Wink of Stella just really stands out, okay? And it doesn't take long to dry either. Okay. And then if we want to go back over it, we always could. But I think that's good. I think you guys get the idea. All right. So there's that. And I'm just going to set that aside and let that dry for a second. So we can start putting him together now. Now, I'm going to use my mini dimensionals, but I have to tell you, even with our little skeleton, um, you can put it in like the center of the body, but I think you're going to have to cut them in half if you want to like secure the, the hands and the feet. So just something to keep in mind. Like this hand is probably okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can get away with it. Yeah, that hand's okay. But for these like thinner pieces down here. Now, what I did on my original guy was I actually put his shoes and his hat on dimensionals because I wanted it to look like it was too big. You know, he doesn't have his, his skin and his, his muscles anymore. So I wanted it to look like it was loose on him. Um, you guys could do whatever you want, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave the backing on here so that it doesn't stick. I'm just going to flip this over. And I'm going to cut these in half and I'm just going to pop the shoes right onto these and then I'm going to pop them onto my little skeleton here. Okay, so I might be better off putting it right on his foot. And then we'll put our shoe right on top. Okay, and so it just looks too big, doesn't it? I just think that that's so cute. It might be hard to tell on screen too, but I can't resist little details like that. All right, and then we'll do this other foot. So basically half a dimensional per foot. Okay. And then I'm gonna pop a half of a dimensional on his hand. Okay, his hand right over here. Oh. I put a whole one down. Okay, so I'll put the half on the up one here. And then let's put a half on his feet. And one more. I feel like I need to do a little bit here too. I really, I really want him to stay down on the card. All right, so I'm going to remove my backing pieces now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the cane onto this dimensional, but we're also going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of it. Okay. All right, so let me just put this right here. There's his little cane. I think I hear Connor coming in. So if you guys hear yelling, I might have to go, but I think we'll be okay. So I'm just going to pop this right here. 
All right, and then I also want to put a dimensional on his hat. I'm going to put it at the top. And we're going to put it on his head. Okay, so right here-ish. And then I'm going to put my little bat right here on his top hat. Okay. And then let's see if we can get this card together really quick. I hope I don't have to rush off of here, but if I do, I will record the rest or get it, make sure it's posted in the replay. But let's just go ahead and put these pieces down. I'm going to start with this one. And just to speed it up a little, I'm going to put down my seal plus. I prefer seal plus over regular seal, even for like regular card projects. And of course, I didn't get my lineup right. I'll be honest with you guys, I would literally just trim that that little piece off there. But we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. Okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna overlap this piece. And then just to show you what this would look like, I'm going to pop this here, but I'll be honest, um, because I'm doing the coffin skeleton, I'm going to be covering it, but just so that you have the reference here. Okay. Pop that down. Oh, and you know what? I didn't put my little bats and my little bow tie on. All right, so we'll get those on him but we're gonna put him down next, okay? So the idea is not to cover our trick or treat and to put him right down here. So I'll grab my, I'll use the rest of this pack. Gotta kind of put it right in the center. Let's pop this one on, okay? And again, we're gonna have some overlap with the top there and that's okay. Gonna line that right up okay and then let's do i put a couple of my bats in darker colors around the white bats So there's one. I have to, there it is. I was going to say I lost my third bat. Okay, here we go. So we'll do this one right here. Just pop them wherever you want. Okay, and then we'll put our other one right up here. And then let's get his little bow tie on because it's very classy and dapper. There we go. All right, I think I got all of the details on this one because there were definitely more than the first card. And here is our finished project. Okay, so I'll just put these two pieces right down here. Let me get my other card back in here. Um, let's see. It's changing my view. That was weird. All right. So here are all of our cards. Oh, I see. My internet is being a little bit weird. Okay. Hang, hang with me, you guys. I'm going to sit down and see if I can talk here for a second. Okay. I think we got it. It gets really hot under these lights and my nose is running. <laughs> Let me take care of that real quick. Okay. All right. So 
I look even to you. I can't stand when my lives are on a delay. It drives me crazy. Okay, there we go. So those are our two finished projects. And you can see this one is much less um, inked than this one is. So it is always interesting when you're seeing the live. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go back through. All right. Great card. Adorable cards. I enjoyed this. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Love this paper. I love, love, love this paper. I'm so happy you guys love it too. Love your ideas with the dice. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so glad you like that. I made a coffin using the basic border dies. That's awesome, Joan. So Joan has a, let me see if I can pop that up here. So Joan is saying that she used the basic border dies. That's a great idea. Okay. And then um, Stampin' Up! needs to come up with a glow in the dark something. Um, I agree with you, whatever the product is. Oh, dark pen. Oh, that would be amazing. That's Lois. Lois was saying that. Rose says, I've never had much luck with Wink of Stella. I've gotten an oozy blob many times. Yeah, what I've started doing with Wink of Stella is dabbing it off on a piece of scrap paper and then coloring whatever it is that I want to color. And I've had a lot of success with that. But this one is gobby. I, the, the last one that I had, I didn't feel like it was gobby. So it might have been the way that I put the pen together, but I'm, I'm just not sure. Um, get off of work in five minutes so I can go play. Yes. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yeah. You guys are going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, adorable projects. I'm inspired. I'm so glad, Rose. Tracy says she loves both of the cards. Okay. So if we still have a minute, let me see if I can show you what I got from Cracker Barrel. Okay. So I got these. I got Ger the Gerardelli squares, but they're milk chocolate caramel apple. Um, I haven't opened them yet, but yum. Okay. So if you want to tape one of those inside of a card, if it's okay being bulky, um, I couldn't resist this. And let's see what you guys think of this. Um, I couldn't resist because I really want this hand to hold one of my cards. Is that, is that like wrong? I just think that that's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, it, it might be a bridge too far. I don't know, but I think it's great. Um, so I got that hand. So we'll just put that hand like right here. Cause she wants some Gerardelli squares and it's just on a stick. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's just on like a little stick there. And then, um, here are, oh, so this is my son loves these. So Jelly Belly has all of these different um, candy options that you could do. He loves the cherry. So I got a pack of those. And then um, one more thing. I also got the Monster Peeps. And it's Frankenstein. Is that so cute? So, yeah, those were my, um, those were my Gerardelli. Uh, let's see what these, I'll open these just so that we can see what this looks like. Hang on. They're so hard. Okay. Tracy says, take a, a photo or a video of the hand scooping up a treat. That is awesome, Tracy. Doing that. Okay, here's what they look like. Is that adorable? So the, the reason why I like these is because it's not exclusively Halloween. Like you could do this for fall, fall projects. Um, you could do this for Thanksgiving. If you're doing like little Thanksgiving favors at the table or something like that. I feel like it counts. Like I feel like it covers multiple things. Um, so that's what they look like. And my, my lighting is like totally shining all over that. But yeah, you get the idea. So I haven't tried them yet, but they smell amazing. The minute I opened that up, it smelled amazing. Okay. So it's, oh my, that candy. That's, that's Lori. I know Lori. I really had to, I had to behave myself. I couldn't, I could not get a lot, you know, I'm a girl on a budget, but yeah, it's, I think that we got a couple of good things there. So we'll be showing some fun stuff with these. All right. Let's see if I can switch back and hopefully my nose will stop running. All right. It's so hot under these lights. I wish I could show you a picture of this light. It's gigantic. Um, Let's see if we can go back to, oops, oh boy, it's very close to me. Okay, here we go. Or we could just go to this shot. 
but I know it's the cards that you guys all want to see. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for being here. I really hope that this multi-streaming thing worked. Um, I'm really hoping that you guys are actually watching me on my Facebook page, like my regular Facebook business page, Stamping with Heart. And then I hope that you're also seeing me in the Heart of Halloween Facebook group. If, if that worked, I will try a test um, to see if I can do YouTube and Facebook. I'm, I'm so nervous to do it because YouTube is a different thing. Like I have to have a moderator because I can get some, you know, not great comments and things like that. YouTube's a little bit different live than um, Facebook is. I feel like everybody's really respectful on Facebook, but YouTube gets some, I don't know. And I can um, filter certain words and comments, but I did a YouTube live back in the day and it really scared me because um, I could not stop this person who was just saying not nice things. Um, and it wasn't like specifically about the project. It was like not nice words um, just over and over and over and over again. And I did not know how to turn it off or stop it. So that's why I hesitate to do that. Um, but that said, I shouldn't let it stop me from going live on YouTube as well. So I have gotten requests for that. I definitely want to be able to do that for you guys. So I'm going to try it. Uh, so you might see me doing a couple of test lives. And then if we can get everything up and working, then in the fall, you know, once this catalog is live, I'll start multi-streaming in both places if I can get it to work. If I can't get it to work, then I'll probably, you know, just stay on Facebook. I don't plan on leaving Facebook in any way. I will still be here. I'm just hoping to kind of get some live streaming going on YouTube as well for um, the people who aren't on Facebook who've reached out to me. So I know that hand is the best. It is awesome. She said they would work perfectly with the All About Autumn Suite. Yes, I think they really would. Um, I think, and honestly, like when you guys look, oh, here, <laughs> not helpful. Okay. So if you look at this, let me see if I can just make this big for a minute. Does that not look exactly like Parakeet Party or even Granny Apple Green? Like, doesn't it just make you want to make like a Granny Apple Green wrap with the All About Autumn Suite now, <laughs> which I have sitting right next to me by the way, because that's the card class I have to design next. I just finished my September club card um, or card class. But yeah, so lots going on. But anyway, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. Um, just one more shout out. Last day for the host code. Um, last day to sign up for In Color Club for those of you who've been taking the club for the last few months. Um, last day will Tomorrow will be the last day for kits collection sale. Tomorrow will be the last day for redeeming your bonus days coupons if you haven't already done that. So hopefully that covers all the bases and I will be opening up registration for my paper share very, very soon. I will have the replay for this. I will have the free project sheet for these two cards and all of that lovely stuff tomorrow. So the blog will be updated tomorrow. Project sheet will be up tomorrow. I'll send out the email tomorrow. All of that will happen tomorrow. So um, thank you guys so much. I hope that you enjoyed week three of the 12 weeks of Halloween. And then I will be back again next week um, with another project. For those of you who aren't feeling Halloween, you probably aren't going to see this comment, but I did get my August paper pumpkin kit and I will be doing alternates with that very, very soon. Okay. Thank you all. Bye-bye.